This episode is sponsored by Front End Masters. They have a terrific lineup of live courses you can attend either online or in person. They also have a terrific backlog of courses you can watch, including JavaScript the Good Parts, Build Web Applications with Node.js, AngularJS in depth, and Advanced JavaScript. You can go check them out at frontendmasters.com. This episode is sponsored by Hired.com. Every week on Hired, they run an auction where over a thousand tech companies in San Francisco, New York, and LA bid on JavaScript developers, providing them with salary and equity up front. The average JavaScript developer gets an average of 5 to 15 introductory offers and an average salary offer of $130,000 a year. Users can either accept an offer and go right into interviewing with the company or deny them without any continuing obligations. It's totally free for users, and when you're hired, they also give you a $1,000 bonus as a thank you for using them. But if you use the JavaScript Jabber link, you'll get a $2,000 bonus instead. Finally, if you're not looking for a job but know someone who is, you can refer them to Hired and get a $1,337 bonus if they accept a job. Go sign up at Hired.com slash JavaScript Jabber. Let's face it, bookkeeping is hard, and it's not really what you're good at anyway. Bench.co is the online bookkeeping service that pairs you with a team of dedicated bookkeepers who use simple, elegant software to do your bookkeeping for you. Check it out at bench.co slash JavaScript Jabber for 20% off today. They focus on what matters most, and that's why they're there. Once again, that's bench.co slash JavaScript Jabber. This episode is sponsored by Wrangle.io. Wrangle's been working with Angular 2 for a long time. And they are now putting together an eight-hour, two-day course designed to help Angular developers learn how to write apps in Angular 2. If you're looking to level up your JavaScript and Angular 2 skills, then go to wrangle.io slash training and click on the link for Angular 2 training. If you're looking for other training in React or JavaScript, they also have that available at wrangle.io slash training. Hey, everybody. We are back. Uh, We're doing another interview here at Build. AJ is here. Yo, 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 coming at you live from Microsoft Build. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, we're also here with Gaurav Seth. He's a Microsoft engineer on Chakra. Is there anything else you want to say? Yeah, no, I you know, love to be on your show. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Work on both Chakra as well as TypeScript you know, projects. So happy to talk to you guys today. Awesome. Yeah, and I know that we've had a few people come on both uh, Adventures in Angular and JavaScript Jabber to talk about TypeScript. Sure. And I think we're going to be talking to Anders later on about TypeScript. So I think we're going to... on the list. Yeah. We're just going to focus awesome. on uh, Chakra. Chakra. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Yes. Yeah. So it's really interesting as we've kind of been paying attention to, you know, JavaScript appearing on different platforms. For example, you have JavaScript core basically enabled on iOS. Uh-huh. And so you can write native or native-ish apps yep. in JavaScript. Yep. You know, V8 is becoming much more of a thing with Node.js. Right. And, and so, you know, when we see Microsoft backing Node. Right. So wh- where does Chakra fit in with all this? I mean, we see it in IE and Edge, right. but it, are there other... So there, there yes. Uh, you know, let, <coughs> let me start giving you a brief intro. So we started Chakra a few years back, right? And uh, Chakra was the JavaScript engine that, you know, we initially started, uh, I think it was the i9 time frame that we started, uh, you know, working on this uh, Java, new JavaScript engine. Uh, since then, we've really evolved Chakra over a period of time. Now, today, Chakra not only supports Microsoft Edge, but, you know, Starting Windows 8, you know, whenever we went to these store-based applications and now universal Windows applications, Chakra has been powering all hosted web applications and you know JavaScript-based mm-hmm. web applications that you can get from the store. So that part, you know, Chakra was already there. It's just the same web platform that you're using. But over and beyond that, you know, there are a lot of services now that are also actually using uh, Chakra. For example, Azure Document DB uses Chakra to provide you know the JavaScript uh, programmability for their uh, you know, procs and uh, stuff. There's Outlook.com that uses Chakra. There's Cortana that mm-hmm. uh, is using Chakra. And very recently, I think this was in January, we announced in December, but in January we actually open sourced the core of the Chakra engine, which we're calling Chakra Core. And, you know, one of the big things amongst others for us on, uh, you know, why we did this is like, we really want to take Chakra across platform, uh, you know, not kind of restricted to Windows only. And, uh, you know, that also kind of opens up the door of having another runtime or another JavaScript engine being available in Node.js. So one of the things we are trying to work with the Node folks, uh, you know, along with, uh, you know, folks from Google is to see how we can actually abstract out a neutral VM API surface for Node such that, you know, multiple engines can start plugging into Node. So, I mean, if you look at it, even though, you know, a lot of people know about Chakra only thinking it's only Edge or IE, it is actually, you know, a lot more uh, spread out than just being used in those two scenarios. Gotcha. So I I wanted to just clarify a couple of things. One is is that 
you're saying that some of these apps are actually written in Chakra. So you can write Windows apps in JavaScript? Yes, you can write Windows apps in JavaScript. And, and we're not talking like Electron and Node, we're talking Chakra. Yes. And can you write, so, so now I'm going to throw a whole bunch of platforms at you and you can say yes or no. Windows Phone? Yes. Xbox? Yes. No kidding. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. So basically, you know, it's, it's the, uh, the whole motto of Universal Windows Platform, right? It's mm -hmm. like, you know, you can write apps in any language that you want, and they are supported across the entire device family that is supported by Windows, right? I mean, right. as a device family. So wherever Windows runs, uh, you know, you can write your applications, your store-based applications using those Universal Windows Platform APIs, and JavaScript is an option there, and all of that uses Chakra. Right. So, so, well, two things. One, Mozilla had a project where they tried to abstract Node, and that just kind of fell by the wayside. Yes. So are you guys, like, committed to seeing this through and, like, helping that funding? Like, it's going to happen. We will have Node. Yes, we are 100% we are committed to make that happen. Okay. I think, and we, we've been talking to a lot of people. I think, you know, every everybody has a different, uh, you know, point of view. I think when, uh, you know, Mozilla started doing this, that was way early when Node was really, really young. And I think uh, at some point in time, they lost a couple of uh, people who were actually working on that effort, and they didn't well, support it beyond that point. And, and before Microsoft got involved in Node, it probably wasn't abstracted enough to yes. really take that on. Yes, and, exactly. And it's been Microsoft's massaging of getting those critical pieces separated. That's that, that is so true. And, and that's, I mean, one of the things for us is, like, we are 100% committed to, you know, help Node succeed. You know, the, the biggest thing we see here why, you know, Chakra would help Node is because, you know, having, you know, more than one engine being available in the Node ecosystem is really going to help the Node ecosystem grow. It is going to help take, you know, Node to different new, newer platforms, to different platforms, to different places. You know, different people can actually optimize the developer experiences, you know, the tools that are available based on, you know, multiple engines that are being available. Today, everything is just constricted or restrained to, you know, hey, here's the stack and you can only work against that stack. And, you know, it's all about opening that thing up. So, so it, it kind of makes Node almost like a browser in the sense that you have a common standard API set but different backends and that is different correct. specific features. Yeah, that is correct. I mean, when you say different specific features, right, I think uh, this is one of the, uh, you know, uh, misconception that a lot of people carry. That, when, you know, in terms of JavaScript engines today, when you talk about the language functionality that is supported in most of the JavaScript engines, we are almost on par. Like, you know, a lot of developers worry that, uh, you know, just like the browser of the 90s, right, late 90s, mm -hmm. where there were, like, you know, so many browser-specific code that you have to write if you're targeting one browser versus the other browser. I think, you know, a big thing to clarify in that scope is like a lot of those browser-specific features were not really in the JavaScript engines, but they were mostly in, for example, the rendering area, the rendering engines, the layout engines, etc., which developers had to work through. Over the last five to six years, we've actually been working with, uh, you know, ECMAScript committee, TC39 committee, and ECMAScript to create the standardized test suite for JavaScript called Test262. And today, if you look at it, like almost all browsers, uh, you know, just let me take an example. ES5 support, everybody passes 99.99% .99 of that test suite, which basically tells you that, you know, JavaScript implementations from a language perspective are fairly interoperable today. So, you know, developers would not run into those issues. Now, that said, hey, if there's a cutting edge new feature that is actually going to light up in, say, one of the future versions of JavaScript, right? Like, let's talk about ES2017, let's assume async functions, or, you know, some people call it async await is going to light up. You know, one engine is going to do it before the other engine. But, you know, it's, it's very hard to imagine that developers would be taking dependencies on such cutting edge features. And again, Except those, that they do right now. No, and yeah, again, some I, do. Yeah, some do, and again, the thing is, like, even in those features, it's not that the VM implementers are way far behind that, you know. You know, one VM has implemented it, but the other virtual machine is going to implement it years later. It's just a matter of months that we are looking at. And all of those, like, I think with evergreen browsers becoming a reality, right, everybody first puts things out in experimental mode and then brings it in. And that, that's what I meant by specific features. I yes. didn't mean necessarily that you're trying to diverge, but rather, like right now, Node has command line flags that if yep. you pass it, you'll get experimental features that may or may not yes. make it into a future version yes. of StableNode. Exactly. And I think from Chakra's perspective, what we have been trying to do is, you know, we created a shim which makes Node think that it's talking to the V8 engine itself, but that shim actually, you know, 
talks to Chakra instead of V8. And our goal has been to kind of light up the exact same experience that devs have today when they're using Node, which is working with V8 engine. You know, one of the things I can, you know, take as an example here is, you know, one of the things our team has been working on is providing the same amount of debugging support, right, that, you know, Node developers are used to. So today, if you go open Visual Studio Code, you can actually start debugging Node. You know, we've been hearing from developers, it's a great experience debugging Node and VS Code. And over the last three months, since we took uh, Chakra open source, you know, one of the things we announced was you're going to be working on these modern debugging APIs, you know, that are going to be, you know, we can make them interoperable with other implementations and take them across tool chains. And, you know, we now have made such progress that now we have such APIs where, you know, you take Node running with V8, you can debug it with VS Code, you replace it, you have Node running with Chakra, just works. And that, that's the thing that we are trying to work towards is like, hey, what is that neutral API surface that we got to look at so that from a Node development perspective, it remains very easy for Node developers while, you know, others in the ecosystem can come and differentiate. Our, our goal here is not at all, I mean, I want to be very clear, our goal here is not at all to try and replace V8 in Node because I think having more than one engine is going to be great for Node. And our, our plan is to just help Node grow its ecosystem. So you've said two things that kind of make me wonder a little bit. So the first one is you've basically said that it would be a good thing mm -hmm. for Node uh -huh. to be able to run V8 or Chakra or yes. maybe something else. Yep. The flip side of that is is that you also talked about how both V8 and Chakra are mostly interchangeable. Yes. So I'm wondering what would be the advantage then of having Chakra on Node? Right. Uh, other than maybe being able to debug something on a system side runtime instead of having to fire up a browser. I, I mean, I, I just, I'm trying to figure out, okay, so what circumstances would lead me to say, okay, I want my node to be running Chakra yep. instead of V8? Great question. And I think there are, there are multiple things here. Let me kind of start listing a few of those examples so that you, know, you can kind of think about the, those advantages. Each JavaScript engine that exists today, mm -hmm. like you, know, you talk about V8, Chakra, SpiderMonkey, JS Core, you know, they optimize things for specific scenarios. When I say oh, optimize, yeah, it's the performance, right? And as a developer, when you're writing a particular application, in the browser, you end up testing like, okay, where is my application actually running fast or running slow? So, you know, we have different performance characteristics. V8 has different perf uh, performance characteristics. And for specific scenarios, specific engine might be, you know, might do better. You know, so that's one way where, you know, developers... Having choice for developers is great. That makes sense. Uh, another, another such example is like in terms of the architectures of the engine, right? That itself is different. For example, Chakra has always supported an interpreter from the get-go. You know, we have a multi-phase pipeline where we have, we start with the interpreter and then we compile code and, you know, start executing mm -hmm. code. That's really useful for, you know, very early start, very, very quick startups. V8 today does not have that. And having an interpreter basically implies that you can actually port an interpreter to any other platform very, very quickly because you don't have to rewrite the JIT compiler, which is all written like, of course, both of them are in native code, but it takes a lot more time to take a JIT compiler and make it portable or like, you know, make it to work on another platform. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, if you have an interpreter, it can go to another platform very, very quickly. I'm, I'm kind of hypothesizing here, but let's assume that you had to take, you know, Chakra to PowerPC. So the, you know, amount of work that is needed to take just the interpreter piece to the PowerPC is much, much smaller. It is much easier to go there. However, like taking the full JIT to that mm -hmm. uh, point is a much more involved effort. So, you know, that's how we are imagining that, you know, this ecosystem will grow. So if I wanted Node on a MIPS router, that will probably never happen with V8 Node, but with Chakra Node, it might be more possible? Possibly, I mean, an interpreter is a very easy thing to port. Gotcha. So I'm wondering- I mean, that's it, I should also say, I think the V8 team is also working on an interpreter. So, you know, once that becomes a reality, even from a V8 perspective, that is doable. I mean, these were just some examples. And, uh, you know, I would also kind of call out, sorry, I know I'm cutting you, but- No, go ahead. One, one third thing that I kind of, uh, you know, love for developers is, you know, as the JavaScript language has been evolving, right? Mm -hmm. From a standardization perspective, and we work with ECMA, when we work in TC39, right. you know, most of the standardization typically happens from a web client perspective like the web browser perspective. And as CC39 has progressed, ECMA has progressed, now, you know, we've defined stages of like, hey, we would want like their stage zero, stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four for different proposals that we have. 
And to get any feature to get to stage four, which means that it is going to come into the specification, you need more than one VM implementation to be there. So Node today has only one VM, which is kind of running there. Mm. At least having two VMs, you know, there are two implementers who can also think about features from a server side perspective instead of just thinking about them. And that would be so nice because I've I've wondered so many times why Node seems to get ignored. It's almost like it's the red-headed stepchild of the community sometimes because the, it, it's, the, the community should be together, but it seems they fight. I completely they, they want to ignore yep. each other. They want, Node wants to specifically sometimes do things not the browser way just to be incompatible and vice versa. Browser mm-hmm. implementers, they, they, I can't remember what it was, but I remember during the standardization process, Node has already solved many problems mm-hmm. And some of the standards that have arisen for HTML5 that came well after Node, like buffers. Yes. Completely yes. incompatible implementations. Like, why? Yep. And I think well, that's that's one of the big things that I am looking at, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, when I kind of think about it as, as a big advantage for developers, because, you know, then you're thinking about it from both the perspectives, uh, you know, across more than one virtual machine or one JavaScript engine. Yeah, that's that makes good. sense. I can also see that some people may dismiss Node by basically categorizing it as V8 and then saying, well, if it works in Chrome, but in reality, that's not the way that it actually works. Yes. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really interesting. Um, I'm curious, as you talked about the standards, uh-huh. and so we've got uh, the ES5 standard, and now we have the ES2015 standard. So where is Chakra with implementing that, mm-hmm. and maybe ES2016, 2017, you know, some of the standards that are now coming down the line, where are you at with implementing those features and how do you decide and how do you make that all work? Yeah, great question. So I think ever since when, when it was released, it was still ES6 before uh-huh. it became ES2015. So Chakra has been actually leading in the implementation of you know ES6 or ES2015. Yeah, ES2015. I always get confused in the years yeah. <laughs> uh, that you connect. So we've been leading and today I think uh, you know one of the things we will be doing soon in the you know previews to come is we are actually now, we've already implemented almost all of the ES7 or ES2016 feature sets. So, you know, for example, the array includes is there, the exponentiation operator is there, and we already are also supporting some of the more future stuff. For example, we have experimental support for SIMDJS. We already have experimental support for async functions, which we would like to enable by default. So we are, I mean, uh, being ahead in, uh, you know, the whole standardization process is like, you know, a two-pronged thing. Like, it's both, it has its Mm -hmm. pros and cons. Like, you know, when you do things early from an engineering perspective, at times the spec changes and you have to throw away that work, right? But the thing that it actually really enables and, you know, the reason we want to kind of be at the forefront of picking up those features and implementing it is that it actually gets implementers' feedback back into the standardization process. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as part of the whole ES6 evolution or ES2015 evolution, there were so many instances where we implemented that feature set, ran it across the web, you know, got some data back to the committee and said like, hey, you know, this particular functionality or capability, if we do it this way, is going to break the web in this way. And, you know, there were like, there was, uh, I don't remember the exact specific uh, API, but it was like, you know, an old version of one of the mobile frameworks, you know, one of the popular mobile JavaScript Mm -hmm. frameworks had, you know, the same uh, name of that API being available. Now, you know, there was a clashing functionality difference. So anybody who had taken a dependency on that old version, you know, was broken. Even mm-hmm. though the new version had updated, but the web does not move ahead, right? Like uh, with <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> that's the thing I would say. So it comes with its own pros and cons, but I always look at it uh, and we kind of feel that, you know, the pros really overweigh the cons. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, being ahead, being early helps get that implementation feedback back into the standardization process, you know, to help evolve the spec in a better right. way. So what's coming down the line with Chakra now? So I think one of the biggest things, as I said, right, we went uh, open source uh, in January. You know, it's called Chakra Core. Chakra Core is similar as, you know, it's the same exact core that Mm -hmm. Chakra shares with a couple of differences. That makes me want to cheer. I I love it when, you know, these projects that people are using that, you know, are out there that can make a difference, make a statement. Right. They go open source and say, hey, look, we appreciate the community and we want the community to be involved. Yes. So, and in, for, for Chakra Core, like, you know, one of the biggest things on our agenda, like our roadmap is published uh, publicly at our GitHub repo, but the, one of the biggest things we are tracking is taking Chakra Core cross-platform. We are mm-hmm. actually going to start with Ubuntu. We've actually started making very good process, progress on that. 
and uh, you know we now have our GC actually running on Ubuntu, which is great. Like I mean, mm -hmm. in the last three months, we've made uh, you know such good progress. So that's number one. Like taking Chakra cross-platform is number one on our kind of map. Number two is kind of working with the Node Foundation and uh, you know along with Google and V8 team mm -hmm. to see how we can actually advance Node to have more than one VMs or one JavaScript engines to work with Node. Like how do we actually evolve that architecture? So you know, that's one of the next things that is uh, you know the second thing on our agenda. Uh, of course, with JavaScript engines, the one thing that is always there is, you know, keep keep improving from a performance perspective, keep improving from a security perspective, keep improving from a language support perspective, so that will always be there. That's number three, I will club that in one bucket. And number four, I would say, is like, you know, one of the big things we did was, you know, between Chakra and Chakra Code, a takeaway uh, was, like, we took back the uh, debugging APIs, which Chakra supported, because, you know, they were Windows specific, and, you know, mm -hmm. given that cross-platform was, was our goal, right. we wanted to have these new modern APIs. So we've actually now made a lot of, you know, substantial progress in those uh, modern APIs, modern debugging APIs, uh, with which I was telling you that, you know, mm -hmm. you can now take VS Code and just run more with Chakra there. And, and the goal is to bring them to main, main line and, you know, ship them out. So those are the four, four big pillars, I would say, that we are working on. Nice. So one, you said people can currently use Chakra in applications. And so when I think like Chakra versus Chakra node, V8 versus V8 node, the difference between V8 and node, I can run a V8 shell, but I don't get any I.O. I only get the JavaScript engine. Right. Is that what we're talking about with Chakra? It's just the JavaScript engine. You don't get any of the I.O. You'd need to program that in yep. C Sharp. That's can, right. can I pile on with that? Yes. You said that Outlook.com yep. or whatever was written in Chakra. I so mean, they're using Chakra. They're hosting Chakra for some of the work that they do. Okay. So so is that what AJ described? Is that how yes. they're using it? Yes. Okay. So I it's mean, a, the basically, a .NET framework is interfacing with it. And I mean, it could be .NET. It could be C++. It could be you know anything that you want to interface well, with. What is, what is Chakra? Chakra is our JavaScript engine. I know. I mean, I mean, like the language that it's written in. Oh, Chakra is written in C++. Oh, okay. I thought it was... No, no, it's, it's it all written in C++. C++. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it can interact with any languages, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, there's, there's always, you know, you can do marshalling across different languages and uh, work yeah. across it. But for example, like, I mean, the big use cases is really, like, any application that needs scriptability, for example, you know, NoSQL stores, which is what Azure Document DB as a service is. It's just mm -hmm. a NoSQL store. You know, you want to have JavaScript programmability. How do you get that JavaScript programmability? You need to have a JavaScript engine that runs the JavaScript that developers right. write. And so, you know, it's Chakra that is powering that service as an example. Okay. And then, um, so uh, you're talking about how you're trying to make the API interface the same as V8 so that tools that are currently built around Node with V8 will work just as well. But you're also targeting performance. So is there any conflict there where your shims decrease performance, or is it all negligible, or is it arbitrary? So it's like, uh, I think that's a great question. And I would say that, uh, you know, from the preliminary results that we are seeing, it's a mix. You know, there are certain cases where we are faster. We are much faster. There are certain cases where we still need to catch up. I think this was what, what we really wanted to do as a first step was to actually write the whole thing, you know, so that we can believe ourselves that, you know, first it is doable. And, you mm -hmm. know, the first step is like now that we have crossed that first step, now comes the second step of, okay, let's make this more performant as well. I mean, all of those things can be made performant. So, you know, that's, that's just a matter of time is what I think. But eventually, yes, I mean, it's, it's a mixed bag. It's not like I can say it's one way or the other. Like, there are certain things that definitely perform better. There are certain that don't. Yeah, my experience. So, listeners to the show know that I have come mostly from a Ruby background. Okay. But, you know, four or five years ago, a lot of the conferences would have at least one or two talks comparing different Ruby VMs. Right. So, they would have the timestamps or the where they measure the speed. Uh -huh. Right? And they would basically, yeah, it would be... You know, so this Ruby implementation is way faster than this one doing this. And then the next slide would be, and it's not so much faster doing right. that, you know, right. or it's it's much slower doing it, right. you know. And so it just depends on the way it was implemented and how things kind of came together yes. and then what they could optimize yep. afterward. I mean, and that's why, I, like I was saying in the beginning, right, like each... Each JavaScript engine or each JavaScript VM, right, is kind of optimized for a specific set of scenarios. When we started working on Chakra, like, mm -hmm. our goal was really to look at the real-world web and kind of go optimize for that. Yeah. And that was one of the reasons we said, like, hey, even in terms of our architectural pipeline, we need to have an interpreter and a, 
you know, JIT compiler right from the very beginning because, you know, how it works is as soon as JavaScript code hits the browser, like let's say you navigate to a particular page, right? It pumps JavaScript code and an interpreter can immediately start running it. It does not need to compile it. It does not need to wait for that. But a JIT compiler, like to produce optimized code, it will take time to compile that code and actually run it. So, and so I, I've noticed on like Raspberry Pi when I run Node, uh -huh. oh, it can be so slow. And same thing if you're using like an Android phone, their processors on Android phones are subpar because I don't think the browser's yet implemented to use multiple cores. So visiting web pages on Android phones is slower. And I think that's in part due to that ramp up time that it has. It possibly is. I, I am not an expert in that. Okay. Like I've not looked at you know how they perform on the Android phones. Mm -hmm. I mean I've looked at well, them from a desktop perspective. For sure. But from your perspective, the wait time between when it gets data, when it gets JavaScript text, right. Right. and when it starts running the JavaScript yes. text, it's pretty much no wait time. I mean, you have to imagine that, you know, it's a pipeline where you have steps of work to be done. So let's go through it, right? Okay. The JavaScript engines get the JavaScript code. The first step is that the engines parse that code, mm -hmm. generate the e ASTs. And then, you know, with Chakra, we actually, uh, with the AST, we just uh, generate bytecode that we start executing. If you have a JIT compiler, you know, you would take those ASTs, you would probably, you know, let them, give them to the compiler. The compiler is going to actually compile them and generate the actual yes. native code that uh, okay. runs. In Chakra, we start running with the bytecode, but give that to the concurrent threads that we have. So we take advantage of concurrency that is available or multiple cores that are available on your hardware. And this is true across any devices, like be it the Raspberry Pi, be it phones, okay. be it uh, desktops. So we basically compile the JavaScript in the background, and as soon as uh, you know a function is ready, we swap that function entry point in the interpreter. So the next time you run, you're actually running the jitted code instead of the interpreter. Code. Okay, that sounds really, really yeah. cool. Because I tried to track down where some of my problems were on starting the application. Sure. And it's nodes vm dot compile. Yes. That is yes. So it, it does take time. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not free. So there are these steps that you have to go through. Some of these steps you'll have to go through even when you're interpreting. But with interpreting, you can just start running very quickly. Yeah, yeah. that sounds now, awesome. I know that you wanted to get to this other session, so we'll, we'll go ahead and wind down. Um, one thing that we do as part of our show, though, before we let you go, is we do what are called picks, and basically it's just. I mean, some people pick TV shows, some people pick coding tools, uh -huh. and it can you know be anything that you're just kind of into right now. Right. So, you know, what is it that you're into right now? Just one or two things. Yeah, great question. I think right now I'm pretty much into TypeScript and learning TypeScript. Uh, you know, I've, I've been with the JavaScript world for a very long time, mm -hmm. and I kind of had this thing like, you know, JavaScript is awesome. And I just started learning TypeScript, and, you know, to be honest, it's amazingly powerful. Like, when it comes to the productivity aspect of, you know, how productive you can be in writing a JavaScript application, it is immensely, immensely helpful, like, uh, you know, with the feature sets. And, of course, given that it is a pure uh, superset of JavaScript, that helps. I mean, the ramp up time to start learning it is very mm -hmm. less. And then, you know, as you start converting. So that's one of the things I've recently started learning. And I would definitely recommend, like, everyone to go check it out if you would love to. Because, I mean, it is supported across any editor or any ID of your choice. It's not only limited to Visual Studio or VS Code. Like, it's available for WebStorm, Vim, uh, Sublime, Atom. You know, anything that you love using, you can go try it out. And it really helps with catching the issues, you know, maintaining very good code velocity or the productivity of the team, and it's, it, mm -hmm. it, it really helps in terms of productivity from that perspective. Awesome. And then if people want to check out Chakra Core or find out more about Chakra and where it's implemented and how they can start experimenting with it, where do they go? Uh, I would say start with the Chakra Core GitHub, uh, Chakra Core GitHub repo. Yeah, I mean, that's the best place for you to get started. Awesome. And then are you on Twitter or GitHub where people can follow yes, you? Yes, I am on uh, Twitter. Okay, my, what's your handle? My uh, handle is uh, at God of Set. Uh, that's uh, G A U R A V S E T H. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And then just to wrap up, uh, I also am just going to kind of pick uh, Richard Campbell and Carl Franklin from .NET Rocks for inviting us out. Uh, it's been fun. We've gotten to talk to a whole bunch of really interesting people. And this has just been a great experience. So yeah. thank you. And thanks also to them for yeah. uh, setting all this up. No, thanks for having me over. And it was great talking to both of you guys. Bandwidth for this segment is provided by CashFly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with CashFly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to learn more.
Do you wish you could be part of the discussion on JavaScript Jabber? Do you have a burning question for one of our guests? Now you can join the action at our membership forum. You can sign up at javascriptjabber.com slash jabber, and there you can join discussions with the regular panelists and our guests.